IZ38 IZ videos. This is Val Tapia uh, speaking with our musical guest today is uh, Vinny Apice, who is best known for his role as the drummer for the band Dio, as well as um, Black Sabbath. And via Skype, we have, uh, without further ado, Mr. Vinny Apice. Vinny, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. good. To be Thank here. you. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, Vinny, before we, we'll start off with your newest project that you did, and this has uh, been a long time coming. It's with your brother Carmine. And um, why don't you just give us kind of the origins of the record and um, perhaps tell us some of your favorite tracks on there. Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, we always wanted to do a record together okay. and it always uh, seemed like we didn't have the time to do it. You know, we were both busy and on different schedules and stuff. So uh, this year was the, the year that we were able to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also, you know, we're starting to book more gigs and it was a smart thing to try to get an album out first. This way we can uh, establish it more as a, uh, a band thing than just a project, you know? So, right. so we finally had the time to do it. So it's been, uh, you know, a great uh, response so far. Everybody's surprised how the album sounds. It's not just a drum thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, uh, it, it's pretty good. So we're really excited about this. Good, and how long was it in the making from, from inception till completion? <laughs> well, we started in January, we started putting some ideas together and then uh, we contacted people that we wanted to play on it, you know, like Joel Holstra and uh, Paul Shortino and everybody that's on the record. And then uh, we told them what we were doing, if you had riffs or you had any song ideas and, uh, you know, send them to us and we'll, uh, you know, listen to them and uh, possibly use them on the record. Right. You know, so a lot, a lot of it came from that. And then I assembled everything. Like I got a bunch of riffs from Joel, uh, and then I put them together into some format we like and on the computer. And then I would put some drums to it and then send it back to Joel. And then he would redo the guitars and send it back. Then Carmine would put drums on it. It was all done on the internet. Right. Crazy. <laughs> right. But it doesn't sound that way. It's, right. It's really. Well, you know. um, with, on that note, what, what's your um, some of your favorite tracks that stand out to you that were, you know, some of the more enjoyable tracks to you? Uh, Monsters and Heroes, a great track, you know, it's about Ronnie and uh, I came out, you know, exceptionally well. That mm -hmm. was a song that was a King Colbert song. They were going to use it and they didn't. And uh, we thought it'd be a great track to use for us, you know, especially with me in, in, the, in the project. Right. And uh, so we went ahead and uh, redid it a little bit and put two drum sets on it. And that, that's a great song. And Sinister's a really cool song. You know, it's pretty heavy. And then it's got some drum breaks in the, in the, at the end of it. And then uh, Sabbath Mash is something that was my idea that we would do in live instead of uh, you know, playing one Sabbath song. We just kind of, I just kind of put a whole bunch of songs together. Right. And it's, it's a very uh, surprising piece of music, you know. So I like them all. Oh, good, good to hear. Um, before we go, before we go uh, further, let me go ahead and um, and you can hear okay, right, Vinny? Yeah. Okay, good. Absolutely. Good to hear. Um, we're speaking with um, Vinny Apice, uh, drummer for who's best known drummer for uh, the band Dio, and he's also played drums in a version of Black Sabbath. Um, he's got a current project also going on called Last in Line, who is coming to Scottsdale in on April twelfth, twenty eighteen, at a place called BLK Live and tickets are available at blkliveaz.com. Just want to get the word out in advance for the upcoming show, Vinny. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, be there. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we hope so. Uh, really quick, um, well, let's go ahead and go right into Last in Line. Um, give us a little bit of the origins of this project as well, and because I think the misconception is people think it's just a Dio tribute band. When you also it can't write- be a, it, it, it can't be a tribute band when the original band's doing it. That's the deal. <laughs> So, yeah. um, and you're also writing original material as well, more importantly, and you're actually in the middle of recording your second album, is that so? Yeah, uh, we're doing this, we, we actually all the basic tracks are recorded for the second album, and uh, we just did some vocals and some guitars, we're scheduled to do some more at, uh, in January, mm -hmm. and that came out fantastic. I think that album's, this next album's gonna be even better than the, uh, the one before, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're really excited about this. 
And it came about uh, one day Viv called me about three, four years ago and said, you know, he talked to Jimmy Bain. He said, uh, hey, would you want to jam, you know, just have some fun? I said, sure. So we got together in a rehearsal place, just the three of us, and we started playing all the old Dio songs, you know, and we were having a blast. It was funny, you know, trying to remember all the parts and solos and things. So that's the way it started, and then uh, it was so much fun, uh, we decided to do it the next week, and then I invited uh, my friend Andy Freeman, was in, in L.A., and I said, why don't you come down, you know, you know some of these songs, and she said, sure. So he came down and sang, and he just blew everybody away. Mm-hmm. So, uh, um, so then we decided, well, why don't we do some gigs, you know? So we started with gigs. Uh, then our manager, Steve Strange, got us a record deal, uh, with Frontier Records, and that's uh, who the first album's on, and the second album as well. So we got the record deal, and then uh, after doing a whole bunch of gigs, we we started writing for the record, and that established us more as a, a real band than just playing the old stuff, you know, from the right. Dio records. Right. You know, and it's not a tribute because we wrote that stuff. You know, it's just we're playing it again, but unfortunately Ronnie is not here to sing it. But right. uh, you know, so. Uh, so that established us, and now uh, we're doing pretty pretty good, you know? Everything's building, and uh, people are enjoying it, and they're enjoying the new tunes as well as the old. So it's a really uh, great band, yeah. and we love playing with each other, you know? And, and uh, it's a great uh, sounding band, and we get off, get along on stage and off stage, so that's important. Yeah. Um, who is in the band currently? Um, Jimmy Bain, uh, as we know, obviously he had passed away in January 2016. Who's in the band currently? And Give us a little bit of a background on, on those musicians. Uh, well, Jimmy's Jimmy, yeah, unfortunately passed away right before the album was released, and uh, really sad. And then uh, we we waited a bit, and then we started auditioning bass players. And uh, one of them was Phil Susan, who's a great friend of mine, one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. And Viv knows him for years. You know, he comes from the same uh, school. And uh, so he came down to play with us and it just gelled, you know, it just worked so well. So Phil's been in the band and it's just been a, so great to play with him. Uh, with with Viv, we right. just tight as a glove, you know, it's really, really cool. And now in the writing process, it works just as well. You know, Phil's a great writer and he fits in well and we're all on the same page. So it was just, uh, a, you know, better than we ever thought it would be, you know, right. so. And then Andy Andy Freeman on vocals, he sang some uh, with the Offspring, and he was in the Rock Vault show in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. He's just a monster. He's turned into an absolute monster singer, and uh, he's you know <laughs> establishing himself in this band now as as a force to be reckoned with, pretty much because he's just killed it, you know. Right. What if, um wh- what would you help? Do you think the uh, the second album will be finished by the time you guys get to Phoenix in April? Uh, yeah, but it won't be released. They want to release it, I think, uh, maybe after the summer. I'm gotcha. not sure, but I think it, it's going to be that kind of a release. It won't be out that quick. Gotcha. Okay, um, why don't we go ahead and, uh, speaking of the original deal lineup, give us some, uh, just some brief memories of the time that the, um, you guys were together, and you can either, I mean, talk from album to album, uh, and you guys did, th- the original lineup did three albums together, Holy Diver, The Last in Line, and Sacred Heart. Um, yeah. What what memories stand out to you from each recording, and um, uh, what are your, some of your favorite tracks to play live? Uh, well, Holy Diver was the beginning of the band, and we rehearsed at Sound City, and we recorded at Sound City. They had a complex there where there was a rehearsal, a couple of rooms on one side of the parking lot, and then the other side was the studios. Right. And uh, so, you know, we used to rehearse, you know, and then when we pretty much wrote four songs, we took all the gear, just dragged it across the parking lot into the studio. We were just having a lot of fun. Right. It was like boys night, you know, boys club almost, you know, seven o'clock each night we'd meet there and we, we would tear up the place and just do crazy stuff there. <laughs> right. So we, had, we were having a ball, you know, we were having a great time. And uh, we wrote a couple songs, dragged it across to the studio. We'd go in and record it and then finish it up and then bring all the the gear back to the rehearsal room, write some more. And uh, so it was a great time. It was exciting. The band was new. Everybody was having a a ball. And uh, 
and then we went on tour and you know the first tour was with uh us and queens right and uh and then the album just started the album finally came out you know we were playing smaller places then before you know we were playing arenas you know right. so it was a great time just the rock was big yeah. bigger than ever then you know 1983 right. and then the uh, second album last in line that was done up at caribou ranch which is up in um, needleland in colorado above boulder and uh, we went up there and lived up there for like six weeks. And there was snow there when we got there. It's like 8,000 foot elevation. We had to get used to the elevation. And so we were just secluded kind of, you know, so we were able to concentrate on what we were doing there. And we probably wrote about uh, three songs up there. I forgot which ones, but uh, it's three songs that were written up there. And we had a great time up there. Yeah. Right. Jimmy was our entertainment director, Jimmy Bain. Right. He went he went out and found where the action was and <laughs> brought it back to the studio. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that, that was pretty wild up there, you know. Right. Yeah. And then the uh, third album, uh, Sacred Heart Sacred Heart. I don't I don't even remember that one, hmm. to tell you the truth. Wow. I think we did that one in LA at uh Village recording studios, and that was kind of not as much fun as the other two albums, right. you know. Yeah, th by and the third uh, album, there was some cracks in the surface by that point. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Viv and Ronnie were weren't seeing eye to eye, and then uh, keyboards were brought in. Not there's nothing wrong with keyboards, but it was a guitar band to begin with, and then right. uh, all of a sudden we're rehearsing and writing with keyboards, and it changed the sound of the band a little bit. The edge kind of came off, you know. Right. So. Uh, it was a transitional time and, uh, you know, it wasn't as much fun. Holy Diver was a blast and Last in Line was, was great, you know, right. but the uh, third album was starting to, yeah, have the crack showing. Yeah. And just a reminder um, to our viewers, we're speaking with Vinny Apice, um, best known as drummer for the band Dio, and he's also played in a stint with Black Sabbath, and he's uh, currently in a band called Last in Line, who are coming to town on Thursday, April 12th at BLK Live in Scottsdale, and you can get tickets now at blkliveaz.com. Um, we're gonna go a little bit back, just a, a slightly, uh, Vinny, right now, if we can, to um, Black Sabbath. And I wanna start with kind of like a little funny story, which has to do with Black Sabbath, a visit in Phoenix, and Easter Sunday. Uh, the Mob Rules uh -huh. Tour, the Mob Rules Tour, April 1982. Apparently, uh, uh, you guys find yourself in a little, a little scuffle with, uh, I'll let you tell the story, and it sounds like you remember, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, why don't you let our viewers know and uh, take us back a little bit. Yeah, so uh, we were booked to play in the arena that was probably 1980 or 81 in uh, Phoenix on Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we, we actually flew there and everything, and then there were people protesting. Mm -hmm. There were people holding crosses up and and all this weird stuff going on and they didn't want uh us they didn't want black sabbath to play on easter sunday right <laughs> you know <laughs> and there were people there in monk outfits and uh, god knows what else and uh so it was like becoming a big problem so they finally said well we're gonna have to postpone the gig to the monday mm -hmm. you know and we <laughs> were like shocked really they they they're uh you know, going to really make us do this. So yeah, that's what happened. Right. And uh, so we had to do the gig on a Monday. We couldn't play on Easter Sunday because they were afraid uh, Black Sabbath, uh, something was gonna happen. <laughs> right. So they were trying to essentially ban the show? Was that what their goal was or? Not ban the show, but they just didn't want us to play. Uh, on Easter? They did. <laughs> yeah, they didn't want us to play. Yeah, yeah interesting. on Easter Sunday. So yeah. that was back then. Now, now you know, Right, I mean, it the sounds humorous was... now. Like I said, at the time, it probably ruffled a few feathers, I imagine. Yeah, so we had to postpone it, and we stayed in Phoenix, and then uh, next night we did the show on Monday, yeah. and everybody showed up, and we had a great time. Nothing happened, you know, it was cool. Cool. So, uh, yeah, that was back then, so <laughs> um, pretty funny. I want to go ahead and uh, go now, since um, we're on to Black Sabbath. I'd like to talk about it now, if we can, now that I think that a lot of fans at the time really unfortunately didn't didn't um simply didn't they didn't pick up the record many i'm surprised how many black Sabbath fans weren't aware of it at the time and this is from 1992 
instead of going to talk about Black Sabbath when you joined them, I'd like to go into when you rejoined them. You and Ronnie James Dio rejoined Black Sabbath for an album called Dehumanizer. And on the record, it's a, it's a fantastic record, and I would argue one of Sabbath's finest moments in their history. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, if you could, uh, Vinny, give us a little bit of your experience recording it, and what were the circumstances surrounding the lineup at the time? To, wh why was 1992 the, the perfect year to get back together again? Well, um, they started that album with Cozy Powell playing the drums. And Cozy was playing it with Tony before that, so that's right. why Cozy came along with Tony. And that was the version of Black Sabbath right. they were planning on doing. And then uh, it, it was taking a very long time. It wasn't going that well. And uh, I think uh, Cozy and Ronnie didn't see eye to eye. So uh, then Cozy wound up having a accident on a horseback accident. He was on a horse and he fell off and he broke his pelvis. Right. So after that, they were like stuck. They're going, now what do we do? You know, so they said, why don't we call Vinny? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so they called me and uh, I flew in to England and uh, we started working on the record and we lived in, Ronnie and I had, uh, they rented a house in Wales. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I went to the house and then Ronnie and I pretty much lived together for about a month at a time. And in that house, we rehearsed what they had. They had about it was four songs maybe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we had to write and come up with new stuff. So we started writing. It was going really quickly. Right. And, uh, so at that point we, we wrote about eight songs, eight or nine songs. And, uh, we went into one of the studios there and actually pre-production kind of thing, recorded everything. Mm -hmm. And it sounded great, you know, we were all excited. And then eventually we were looking for producers. A couple of them didn't work out. And then we got Mac who did some of the Queen stuff. Right. And uh, uh, so Mac came in and uh, he produced it and it just went really well. So. So that was recorded in Wales in a studio called Rockfield. So, right. you know, we went uh, from the house, then we lived at the studio. So it was pretty crazy. And it was recorded at, in October, November, which was gloomy in England, you know? Right. So the mood was perfect for that record. The record's yes. very heavy, dark, you know? Very dark record, yes. Yeah. And, and so, lyrically, uh, uh, kind of a nice change for Ronnie. Um, uh, d definitely a lot of scathing social commentary that we just really weren't used to and that directly from Ronnie before. Yeah, you know, Ronnie's uh, vision and attitude changed a bit. So he was, right. I think he was more on the angry side for things yes. and uh, pissed off, which was great. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. And, and Geezer uh, contributed some of the lyrics, well. did he not? Did he contribute a little bit? Geezer Butler? Who? Geezer Butler? He contributed. Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. contributed. Geezer yeah. contributed. Uh, there's a song on there called Master of Insanity. That's yes. Geezer's song. He wrote it. He wrote the uh, lyrics to it and everything. So. Right. So yeah, anyway, a, uh, yeah, so that album was recorded that, there, yeah. and then when it came out, the problem we had was grunge was just coming out, right? you know? So it, <clears throat> it kind of killed the album a little bit because uh, the grunge was being big, and we were kind of like, you know, Black Sabbath, the dinosaur band, you know? So right. the band wasn't quite as popular, so we were kind of playing smaller places, right. and... Uh, the, you know, we're playing theaters instead of arenas and right. things, you know, settle down a little bit, so. Yeah, that was my uh, very first Black Sabbath concert. November 1992, the Dehumanizer Tour, and again, fantastic. It was a place called Mesa Amphitheater you played here. And just yeah. from start to finish, incredible. And um, uh, yeah, it's, we, it's a record that, like I said, it, it, and it got a little more, I guess a more appreciated as time went on, especially when you guys uh, reunited as Heaven and Hell, the four of you. Yeah. And um, you guys are featured a couple of songs, but yeah, definitely a, a record I wanted to talk to you about because uh, we haven't, I, I don't, I, th I don't think it really gets the recognition it truly deserves. Would you agree? Yeah, well, I, well yeah, yeah, because of that. And now uh, people are discovering it uh, and uh, they, they seem to be talking about it more, you know? Right. And, and, and rightly realizing so. wow, this album's like, yeah, pretty rightly damn so, I might good, have. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Heavy. Okay, um, uh, real quick, uh, in the Dehumanizer sessions, this is a, a question that I, that's popped up in recent years, and 
I guess to, to the core Sabbath fans, they would, they, it's not news, but um, there was a point where allegedly, I'll say allegedly, that um, during the, a break of the dehumanizer sessions, the, I guess there was a, some kind of a rift between uh, Ronnie, uh, Tony Iommi, and Geezer Butler, and allegedly there's, there's a master recording of Dehumanizer with Tony Martin's vocalist, vocals on the record. Um, do you know anything about that, and what was the problem during that time? Uh, no, that's not true. Really? Yeah, mm. that's, that's some load of ham. Yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah. there, so no, there is no, no record. I've never so, heard that one. Really? Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, never heard that. The, if Tony, if Tony Martin was on that record, Ronnie would have went. That's it. I'm out of here. Uh huh. Huh. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's it. That's that tends to be in Sabbath lore and has been for a few years. It's very interesting. Hmm. Well. No, no. Wow. Tony, Tony wasn't around, and uh, no, that would have been the end of the band right there. There wouldn't have been any album, you know. Mm -hmm. Ronnie. If that was the truth, and Ronnie found out, right, uh, that wouldn't work. Well, yeah, and and you know, and like I said, luckily for us, like I said, that everything was worked out, and we got the, the lineup that should have been on that record. So, very cool. Yeah, yeah, this this lineup kicked ass, and uh, we we like we all love that album. You know, right. we love the album. Yeah, I Ronnie mean, was very proud of that record, uh, even when a couple it, of songs on the last tours too. Yeah, Time even when, when Ronnie had left. So with that lineup splintering again, again the end of 1992, he was still very proud of the record, and and um, and up until he passed, he was very proud of it. Who's who are you talking about? About Ronnie. Who are you talking? About? Ronnie was very proud oh, of the Ronnie. record. Yeah. 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 We're all we were all proud of it, and uh, you know um, we still played songs from that record on the 2007-2009 tours. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. We played I. We we all love that record. That song is just incredible, you know. Right. Just such a strong rock song, and uh, so uh, yeah. So everything everything was uh, going honky dory, and then it, then as in the past history, it broke up. Right. You know. So yeah. it was uh, the same thing that happened in, uh, down with Mob Rules, you know. Right. Did the album, did the live album, everything's going good. <laughs> and right. it breaks up, you know. And then, you know, Crazy. going into Heaven and Hell in 2007, when you guys reformed, reconvened and reformed Heaven and Hell, um, you know, things were, were going well until, and you guys were, uh, you guys were not finished, so you guys had planned to continue with Heaven and Hell. Had uh, Ronnie not yeah, passed, you guys would have continued. Yeah, we were, we were thinking about continuing Heaven and Hell with uh, Rob Halford singing. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, because uh, he sang two shows with us that Ronnie didn't want to sing. Right. And, and uh, so we were thinking, well, maybe maybe we continue with Rob, you know. Mm -hmm. So we I don't know. It just didn't happen. Right. But that was the talk, you know, that we would do that. So interesting. Okay. Uh, just a reminder, viewers, we're speaking with um, drummer Vinny Apice, best known for his role in the band Dio, as well as where you were hearing Black Sabbath. And um, really quickly, um, um, do you guys, looking back at 2006, uh, do you guys, do you and Ronnie uh, kind of feel snubbed by not, for not being inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame alongside the original lineup? Well, um, you know, I, I've never really thought about it. and. Um, I can't speak for Ronnie, obviously, right, but right. I think they should consider other people that are in the band that made a difference, mm -hmm. you know, right. and, uh, and I'm talking, you know, we, you know, there was the Aussie version of the band with Bill Ward, mm -hmm. and then there's uh, the version with Ronnie and I, which was the second most important one. Right. So, you know, they should consider who else is in the band because the band without Ronnie coming in and recording Heaven and Hell and writing that album that, that brought big success back to Black Sabbath. Right. You know? And uh, before that, they, the band wasn't doing that great, you know? And then uh, Ronnie came in and they started writing together and it really worked and they wrote Heaven and Hell. And that's an incredible album, right. one of Rock's classic albums. So they that was very important in the band's career. It brought yes. the band back, you know? Right. 
and brought the band back. And then, uh, uh, and then eventually Ozzy started his career and he was able to, uh, you know, get really big. And uh, so all that contributes to the whole band. You know? So yeah, they should have included some of the other members of the bands, you know, at least that version, you right. know, but it, should, it shouldn't have taken them so long to even think about putting Sabbath in there. They should have been in there years ago. Oh, oh I, mean, I, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Black, Black Sabbath has influenced all these bands pretty much. Yes. All the bands that are out now that play kind of heavy and, and from now, from, from now all the way back in the past for 10, 15, 20 years, right. Or influenced Sabbath, yep. you know? So it's like, how could you not even, how do you think twice about, you shouldn't think twice about getting this, this band in the whole Agreed. thing. So. Agreed. Very, so, very, very so well said. With yes, very well said, Vinny. Uh, before I let you go, yeah. um, one more quick, but talk, going back to the um, Apathy record, why don't you talk about the video for uh, Monsters and Heroes and um, how that came together? Well, we, uh, we played a gig at the great rock venue in Vegas called Vamp. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's Danny from uh, Counting Cars show. He, he's the owner with his wife, Corey, mm -hmm. and uh, total rock fans and great people. So we booked a gig there because we know we can get uh, some good results and it would be a great show. And and it was. So the show was great. So we just filmed the show there live and we had the Okai sisters playing with us. They're two Japanese sisters that rock out. Mm -hmm. One's on bass, one's on guitar. Right. And, uh, and it looks cool. We come out, two brothers on drums, and then there's on each other side of us these... Right. Two Japanese girls that just play their ass off, and uh, and then our singer. Right. So uh, we recorded it live, and then at the end of the show, we had everybody stay who wanted to stay. Told them we're going to shoot the video. So we started playing the song through the PA and through the monitor. It's pretty friggin' loud, I must say. Right. And. Uh, and then we just did our thing. What you do with normal videos, you play to it and you do it about 10, 15. We probably did it about 10 times, 12 right. times. And then, and then we had a couple of people come up and play if, you know, on the, my set of drums. And one of them was Carrot Top, the comedian. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a good friend of ours and a uh, great guy, rock fan, of course. And uh, right. so he jumped on my drums. He plays a little bit, you know, but right. he jumped and he was playing you know, along with it and that. So he's in the video too, it came out great. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the next uh, couple of days later, we did the rest of the shoot. So that was great because we had sound and lights there too. And uh, we had uh, a great lighting guy and then a great sound man, Angelo Alcuri, who did all the Dio records. Right. He helped us out. And uh, so we were able to shoot uh, some the live version with the whole band and then we did a shoot somewhere else, which is Carmine and I and Paul Shotino. Right. And then uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie, Jamie Brown is the director and he edited it and he's great. He did the last line videos too. Right. And he's just an amazing uh, director and he put it all together. And so you can't even tell, you know, is with the cuts, what's right. going on with that's two locations, but it is. Cool, and uh, so, yeah, came out great, you know, really yeah, cool and, video. And with that, well, I'm glad you went to the, appreciate the details in that, because we're actually, we're a classic uh, music video channel here, but we're trying something a little bit yeah. new, and anybody, any of the artists who we interview, we want to uh, play their latest video, so we're going to add uh, Monsters and Heroes to our rotation. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, well, anything else you want to add, Vinny, to get, let, or let the fans know out here? We're looking forward to, to, to Last in Line coming out here. Any, anything you want to add to the fans, say to the fans right now, and uh, we'll wrap this up. Yeah, actually, we've been trying to get to Arizona for a long time. We kept telling the booking agent, why don't we play Arizona? We right. play California a hell of a lot. Right. And uh, finally, they, they got us a, 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 you know, a booking in uh, Arizona. So we're really looking forward to it. Right. We haven't been there. And right. it's a great show, great band. And we're going to kick ass. And everybody should come down and, and uh, see this band. It's really fantastic. And Viv is just shredding it you know, on the guitar now, if you want right. to see some guitar playing, this is, this is the, uh, this is the show and Andy's singing his ass off and the drums suck. Right. <laughs> so come down. 
<laughs> Sounds good. Thank you again, um, Vinny. I'll go and let you go. Thank you for your time. And uh, we'll uh, see you last in line in April. And um, thank you very much. All right. Take care. Okay, thank you, guys. Bye-bye.